In the three years since I left my job, I've had to change my relationship with two different things. And it's not what you think. The two things that I've had to change my relationship with are success and failure. I've experienced both throughout the past three years since I quit my job, and you will experience both of them as well. But it's how we handle success and how we handle failure and what we learn from them that is what's important. And so as my relationship with those has changed, I've realized how important that is, and that's what I want to share with you today. My name is Patrick Menefee, and I'm here to help you level up your money, your mindset, and your mission in order to help you become the best possible version of yourself and become the person that you're capable of becoming. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I've been talking about the lessons that I've learned since quitting my job. I share a lot about that. I share a lot about how to become the best possible version of yourself. So subscribe to the channel if that is something that you're looking for. Now let's start with success. Success is the fun one, right? Success is what everybody wants. The relationship that I've had to change with success first is that I've got to celebrate it. It's okay to celebrate it. My default a lot of times is to find the success that I have to say, yep, I did it. Let's okay, let's move on to the next one. And there's there are things that are okay with that mindset. It's good to keep going, to always be pushing for more, but You've got to celebrate the wins. That if you behind me, all of these Legos, they came as a result of a closing, a deal that I did that I closed on, that I sold or I bought, or something, some win that I got to celebrate. And it's become important to me over the past, really over the past year and a half is when I've really learned this lesson. But taking time to celebrate the wins. It may be something as simple as looking yourself in the mirror and saying, You did a damn good job there. Or taking a couple of minutes to take a break and just celebrate or to sit in your car and scream for a minute because you're so excited but celebrate the wins a lot of times we just skip right past them and when we never kind of revel in that moment we're always chasing something more and we're never satisfied take the moment of satisfaction take the moment to celebrate it's been a big lesson for me now along with that change and in accepting success and celebrating it i've had to change my relationship with humility too and a lot of times we think that humility means that we need to bring ourselves down or we need to, to don't be arrogant. We need to tone down how great we might be. Even as I say that, I, I stumble over it a little bit because it still is a little bit uncomfortable because it feels not humble to talk about greatness. And in reality, there is nothing more important than leaning into what you're capable of. And humility, a lot of times, is a word that we use to cut ourselves down or to not let our light shine. And what I found again, especially over the past, really even over the past six months, is that when I am at my best and I allow myself to be at my best, when I work towards what I know that I'm capable of, and which is why I'm so passionate about this, I inspire other people. I've seen it. I've gotten the messages from other people that say, hey, I see what you're doing right now and I'm inspired by it. Please keep going. It means the world. But a previous version of me that doesn't have a great relationship with success and has a negative connotation of humility doesn't do that because I need to hide. I can't shine too bright because it puts other people in the shadows. And that's not the case. When you shine bright, everybody else benefits from that as well. So that's a huge lesson for me. And along with that, I challenge you to think about how you define humility. Do you think about, and how do you look at other people? What's the line between arrogance and confidence? Along with that has come a, a need to assess why I think someone is arrogant. And a lot of times it's my own insecurities that I'm projecting. And so, this relationship change has been huge for me. Now, straddling the line between success and failure in my relationship with the two is, there's a book called Thinking in Bets by a woman named Annie Duke. She's a poker player, and she talks a lot about how when you're playing poker, you can win a hand and you do everything wrong, just like in real estate, just like in business. You can also lose a hand and do everything right. And it, we need to make our decisions and learn our lessons not based on the end result of either success or failure, we need to evaluate based on what we've done and what we learned and what the situation calls for. And so I'll give you an example of what I mean by that. One of my real estate deals, I did everything wrong. It was terrible. The project took three times as long as expected. It went way over budget, but I was profitable on it when I sold it because the real estate market in 2020 took off and in 2021. And so I profited from that deal. So by all outside measures, that deal was a success. But the only reason that was a success is because the market carried me, because of outside circumstances. I played my cards totally wrong and everybody else at the table just played them worse and I came out on top. That's the equivalence of this scenario. In other cases, you lose money on a deal because the market takes a turn or because something else goes wrong or you fail in some way, shape or form, but you did everything right. You can't judge it just based on the outcome. You've got to judge it based on the work that went into it and the decisions that were made. So on that note, let's talk about failure a little bit. If it's about what you did to get there, then every failure is a lesson. And that is what I've really had to take to heart. I've had a couple of big losses. 
One of them was in, well, both of them were in real estate. And they came from, as I look back on them, they came from poor decision making. They came from emotional decisions. They came from irrational excitement about a particular deal or about something rather than the calculated method that I'd use in every deal that was successful. And when I sat down and I look at that failure, I, I could have two options. I could have gone down one of two paths. The first path could have been, well, I failed. I, real estate is obviously not for me. I'm a failure. This is terrible. I, I quit. I'm just going to go back to my job. Or you take the lessons and you say, okay, what did I do wrong in this deal? What did I do differently in this deal compared to the other ones where I made money and where I was very successful? And when you start going through those analyses or whatever you want to call that, and you figure out what you did differently, then you can apply those. And the important piece is applying them. Lessons that you learn do nothing if you don't apply them. They're just words on a paper somewhere, which brings me to another point, write them down. All of the times that I did something, even a deal that went really well and I failed with something in the middle of the project and working with contractors or something else, writing down those things is so critical because my, my default was, this is painful, I'll remember it. We always think with failures that we have, these are so painful, there's no way that I could ever forget. And then we block it out of our heads and we don't actually learn the lesson or we learn the lesson the hard way, but we never implement the solution because we don't write it down. So side note, encouragement, when you fail, when you learn something, write it down. Now, the other piece of my relationship with failure that changed was I, I became accepting of failure. I, I realized how beneficial it was in succeeding. If I could speed up the cycle of experience, fail, apply the lessons, the, the quicker I could do that, and people say fail faster, then the quicker I could grow. But failures are painful. I don't, I don't wanna experience all those failures myself. And that's where everything changed for me when I realized I can latch onto other people's failures. I can work with a coach. I can get involved in a community. I can learn from the failures that you have. And I don't have to make those same mistakes myself. I just have to apply the, the lessons that you learned from yours. And so I encourage you as well, don't feel like you need to fail and learn everything on your own. It's a very painful and slow process, but learn from me. I've failed plenty. Learn from my failures. Don't make the same mistakes that I did. Learn from a coach. Don't make the same mistake that they did. Learn from other people in your community or other people that are doing the same type of thing as you, because there's no reason for all of us to make the same mistakes. Other people have done it. They've written books about it. They've had talks about it. They've shared in YouTube channels about it. So learn from them. These relationships with success and with failure, my change in those relationships has created a lot more productivity and stability for me. Being able to celebrate my wins has freed up a lot of mental space. And now I always can continue to move forward because I've celebrated the previous one and now I can go on to the next one. I don't just jump from thing to thing. And with failure, I apply the lessons that I learn and I dig into them and I figure out why they were failures. And I also learn from other people's failures. And I have my growth has catapulted since working with coaches and being around communities of people that are sharing their experiences and sharing their failures. So I hope that that is helpful to you. I encourage you to do the same thing. And I encourage you to subscribe to the channel because in the future, we're also gonna talk about relationships with people and the importance of those relationships and how that is a game changer as well. So I hope you have a wonderful week. This is coming out Thanksgiving week. So I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving and I'll see you back here next Monday.